think one will be will, will be fine. We have to mic every single person on here to the live stream. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's more than here. Oh, I see. Good morning. Good morning, you guys. How are you today? Yeah. All right, can I please? Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, my name's Nicolette Dennis. I'm the principal at Rogers. But I want to say a couple things before we start. First, I want to thank those that put this assembly together and all the hard work. So thank you to Ms. Miller, Mr. Crisp, the stage crew, which is made up of students, Mr. Brady, Mr. Dugan, Ms. Dockery, Ms. Lovell, all of the student performers and the students that are behind the stage, and welcome to our special guests that are performing today, and any of the guests in the audience. Students, I want to remind you to please be quiet and stay off your phones. You can take pictures if you want. But please be quiet and respectful. This performance is put together by students. And I think it's really important that we show our colleagues respect, our friends, and, and respect, and be on our best behavior. I also want to tell um, people that, and just remind people that Will Rogers High School is named after one of the most famous Oklahomans, Will Rogers, who is also Cherokee. So in his honor today, we are going to have this assembly, and we're going to recognize all the contributions our Native American friends and colleagues and relatives have given to our country and to our school. So please join me in giving a big hand to those people before we start. Let's give them a big hand, you guys. So let's show them a, let's show them a Roger Pride. So I have the privilege of working with Carlos today, 
and he's going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. He is going to do the Pledge of Allegiance today. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance as we post the colors? Gentlemen, take off your hats. Guys, I need you to be quiet. Please salute the flag and recite the pledge of me. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for, for which it stands, stands one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible with, with justice, and justice, justice for all. The students that presented the flag are with Rogers ROTC. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. You may be seated. Um, say it thank you. You may be seated. Uh, please welcome Mr. Brady for land recognition. Quiet, please. We begin by acknowledging that we meet on traditional lands served by the Muscogee Creek people. Oklahoma is home to 39 federally recognized Native American tribes, and our district serves students belonging to more than 50 tribes. The city of Tulsa sits on the boundaries of the Cherokee Nation, Muscogee Creek Nation, and the Osage Nation. We honor America's first people and all elders past, present, and emerging. We are called on to learn and share what we learn about the tribal histories, cultures, and contributions that have been suppressed in telling the story of America. Thank you. Thank you for that acknowledgement, Mr. Brady. Rogers, as students, staff, and faculty from many tribes and nations, today we honor and recognize them. Please give your attention and respect to the flags of these nations as I say them for you. Okay. Muscogee Nation. Absentee Shawnee Nation. The Chickasaw Nation. The Ogallala Sioux Nation the Pueblo Santa Clara Nation, the Ponca Nation, the Cheyenne Arapaho Nation, the Eastern Shawnee Nation, the Cheyenne River Sioux Nation, Pawnee Nation, sometimes it's fun with the clicker, Choctaw Nation, Cherokee Nation, the Comanche Nation, the Blackfeet Nation, the Navajo Nation, the Miami Nation, the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, the Kiowa Nation. Thank you. And those are just a few of the many tribes here in not only Oklahoma, but across the United States. Please welcome Anthony Kimball of the Osage Nation, who will sing as William Sosi from the Odo and Navajo tribes as he shares his traditional dances with us. Mr. Sosi, a graduate of Royal Rogers High School, will explain the meaning of the regalia used in traditional dances and what the dances mean.
Hi, who? Thank you. Uh, my name's uh, William Sosi, and like she said, uh, I graduated from here, class of 04, so it's good to be back. Um, I explain a little bit about my uh, style of dancing here. This is called the uh, Men's Northern Traditional. It comes from the uh, Northern Plains area tribes, and it's moved uh, down south amongst other tribes, you know, shared uh, this dance. And uh, where it comes from is uh, it's a storytelling uh, dance, you know, telling a story of uh, going into war or to battle with another tribe or, you know, other people, enemies, or even, you know, going out on a hunt, you know, there's different things. And if you watch when I dance, uh, you can kind of see those different motions that I go through. And in um, men's traditional, you know, we wear two uh, feathers on top of our roach. This is our headdress is called a roach. Uh, we wear a single bustle, eagle feather bustle, uh, carry a staff and fan, you know, different variations uh, from tribe to tribe, you know, things was uh, given from one tribe to another, or, you know, sometimes it was even uh, captured in battle. And, you know, we would adorn ourselves with that. And so uh, this is the men's northern traditional. Thank you, gentlemen, for teaching us your traditions. These are impressive dances. Thank you for sharing the meaning of regalia and the dances. Please now welcome to the stage Amy Mata and Christopher Hernandez, who will tell us about Real Rogers Native American heritage. This is the first slide. It's on. Okay. Will Rogers, a, fam a very famous and popular speaker and performer, was called the Cherokee Kid. Okay. He was very proud of his heritage. He received his Cherokee lineage from both of his parents, his father, Clement Van Rogers, and his mother, Mary America Scrimshire. He was one for Cherokee.
Here are his parents, Clement and Mary. Will Rogers said, I never had my Americanism doubted before. He found a way to joke about prejudices some held against Native Americans. He said, of course, my people didn't come over the Mayflower, but we were there to meet the boat when they landed. He even joked that, as a matter of fact, the biggest mistake my ancestors made was letting them land. At a time when being an Indian carried a stigma with it, Will Rogers, the most popular man in the world during his lifetime, was very proud of his indigenous heritage. We are proud to have our school named after Will Rogers. Thank you, Amy and Christopher, for reminding us that our own Will Rogers was a proud Native American. Let's draw our attention even closer to home and welcome Alyssa Adams to tell us about tradition from her home, the making of meat pies. Meat pies are a Native American food that are usually sold at Native American events. When making meat pies, the bread on the outside is made with flour and water. Personally, I use ground beef and sprinkle suet on top of it sometimes. I also put jalapenos in them. After putting everything together, you put it in the oven until it's ready, about 45 minutes to an hour. Thank you, Alyssa, for that informative look at a traditional recipe. Maybe some of us will be adventurous enough to try our hand at making meat pie someday. Please welcome to the stage Alyssa's aunt, Waylila Knight, to tell us about the effort to get indigenous voices heard in elections. This movement is called Rock the Native Vote. Good morning, Rogers High School. My name is Waylila Knight. During the land recognition, it was said there are 30 federally recognized tribes in Oklahoma. In the United States, there are 574 federally recognized tribes in the US. Just to give you an example of how much of an impact our votes matter. I am currently the Tulsa coordinator for Rock the Native Vote. We work in collaboration with other nonprofits in Oklahoma, such as Food on the Move. We also work with the tribes, such as Cherokee Nation, Muscogee Nation, and National Indian Urban Family Coalition, TPS, Indian Ed, et cetera, to reach as many people as possible to get people registered to vote. We set up at powwows, art markets, wild Indian dinners, wherever we're invited. I would like to talk about the importance of voting. The Indian Citizen Citizenship Act of 1924 was passed, but didn't protect the right of Native people to vote until the Voting Rights Act of 1965. <clears throat> before our voting rights were even protected. We live in a state that is notorious for low voter turnout and voter suppression. It's no coincidence the representatives in this state want you to think that your vote doesn't matter so you don't show up on election day. A lot of people say, I don't, I'm not political, it doesn't affect me, but the reality is it affects everybody. Your education, even the water, this, the condition of the streets, your health care especially, all of this is impacted by politics. In 2019, 90% of voters were purged from the registration, so it's an active effort to get people registered and then sometimes registered again. During the last presidential election, Arizona and Georgia is proof that change can happen no matter how overwhelming it feels. The native vote changed Arizona, and the black vote changed Georgia. 
It is because people are showing up and elect electing representatives that look like them that changes are happening. For the first time ever, we have an indigenous woman sitting in the US Secretary of Interior, and as a result, more is being done in regards to the missing and murdered indigenous people crisis, such as the Savannah Act and the Non-Invisible Act of 2019. Legislature is even being passed in Oklahoma, such as Ida's law. But we need to make it more relatable. People often say I don't get involved with politics. As I said, it involves everyone. So where do you get the information you need to make an informed decision on your candidates? It's all online now. We have an Oklahoma voter portal where you can look up your registration status or you can look up where your polling site is or your candidate's information. When you're 17 and a half, you can get registered to vote, but you can't vote till you're 18. There's also voter rights for people who are shelterless and even if you're a convicted felon, if you've already served all of your time and no longer on probation, you're able to vote again for if you're a, found, if you were a felon under, uh, under Oklahoma, <clears throat> not federally. I'd be remiss to say if I didn't talk about what the tribes do for this state. When COVID hit, it was the tribes that acted swiftly and very organized in getting everyone vaccinated. I got my vaccinations through the Osage Nation, and my non-Indigenous roommate was able to get her vaccination through Indian Healthcare, since she was residing in the home of a Native person. Eventually, it was opened up to all residents through the tribes, Native and non-Native people. When the antibody treatment became available, again, it was open to Native people and non-Native people. The Cancer Center Treatment of America in Tulsa was closed down. Muskogee Nation purchased that facility, turned it into Oak, a Council Oak Comprehensive Healthcare, opening their facilities for COVID antibody treatment to everyone and often being the first available before other local healthcare facilities. <clears throat> a recent study has shown that tribes have contributed $15.6 billion to Oklahoma economy, as well as 113,000 jobs in 2019. I need everyone to consider this. Tribes are not just an ethnicity. When it comes to relationships of the tribes to the US, we are political entities. We are sovereign nations, just as Mexico and Canada are sovereign nations. The US has tre treaties with other countries, as well as treaties with the tribes. I'm a dual citizen. I am a citizen of the United States, but I am also a citizen of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. The tribes have leaders and branches of governments as well as judicial systems just like the US and should be respected as such. Tribes have elections to vote for people who represent them just as there are in city, state, and federal elections. When people talk about protecting tribal sovereignty, that's what they mean. Although it is important to protect our culture and traditions, we need to protect our status as sovereign government nations in the US as well. This is not about dwelling in the past. We often hear, get over it, it's in the past. But there is still battles in the US Supreme Court, such as the protection of the Indian Child Welfare Act, which keeps native children with their native families or tribes. Again, the opposition is trying to make this about race when tribes are just trying to protect the rights of their citizens and their children. It's often said we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. We are descendants of survivors and fighters, so it's our inherent nature to act as such. Thank you very much. Forgot to introduce my husband. <laughs> Thank you for your appreciation for Rock the Native Vote. I hope you're inspired to register to vote and participate in every election. I'd like to introduce Chris Thompson, my husband, who has a unique business that has brought him into contact with many important indigenous people. Hello, my name is Chris Thompson. I am a member of the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma and a graduate of Will Rogers High School, class of 2000. Um, <clears throat> I'm here to talk to you today about what I do. <laughs> um, when I graduated from Rogers, I had it in my head that I was gonna get into animation, and uh, that led me to a path of, to graphic design, and then graphic design led me to painting shoes, and so, 
Um, yeah, I paint shoes. <laughs> um, these are some of the ones that I've done, and it has helped me to connect with a lot of different people. Um, I've shipped shoes to California, Canada, all over the place. Uh, met a lot of really interesting people. Uh, painted a pair for Ralph Macchio, uh, some of the Reservation Dogs cast members, and um, yeah, it's just really helped me to connect with a lot of people, a lot of indigenous people that I normally wouldn't have uh, interacted with. Also, my wife's uh, Rock the Native Vote affiliation has gotten me into a lot of places where I got to meet a lot of really cool people. Uh, I brought a pair with me because I didn't know if there was going to be pictures. But <laughs> so that was basically what I do. And yeah, thanks for having me here. <laughs> Thank you for sharing one way. Thank you for sharing one way to put a spotlight on indigenous people, both current and past. I'd like to present Levita, David, and Madison with a skit they've created. These students would like to put the spotlight on an issue that is near to my heart, missing and murdered indigenous women. We have been wearing red on Wednesday for this cause. MMIW stands for Missing and uh, Murdered Indigenous Women. What you've just witnessed is a reenactment of a situation that is all too common. A Native American woman going missing and getting murdered, and authorities taking no action. Murder is the third leading cause of death amongst Native women. This needs to stop. Native American women are more likely to go missing than any other race. Reasons that typically result in missing indigenous women are domestic violence, sexual assault, trafficking, and stalking. Many of these women who live in urban areas experience sexual assault and they are not provided protection. More than one and a half million American Indian and Alaskan Native women have experienced violence in their lifetime. Who's gonna protect them? The red handprint represents the silencing of Native American families of these women. Although these women have been brutally murdered, they've been ignored. 
We wear the red handprint on our face to show awareness. No, no more indigenous sisters. I forgot to say something. <laughs> LaVita, David, and Madison, this situation is truly heartbreaking. Thank you for bringing it to our attention and keeping the issue on our minds. Durian folks would like to share a native band with us, Redbone. Welcome, Durian. Hello, uh, my name is Jurian. I'm here doing a presentation for the American rock man, Redbone. Redbone is an American rock man found, founded in 1969 by brothers Pat and Lolly Vegas. All band members during their commercial peak were Mexican American and Native American heritage, which were reflected in their song, stage, costumes, and album art. They reached the top five on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1974 for their, for their single, Come and Get Your Love. The single went certified gold, selling over a million copies. It also made Redbone the first Native American man to reach the top five on the Billboard one, Hot 100. With the song reaching number five, Redbone achieves hits with their singles, We Are All Wounded at Wounded Knee, The Witch Queen of New Orleans and Wachovia, and Maggie in the United States, although their singles were more successful overseas. Fun facts about the group. The word Redbone is Cajun term for mixed race person, which the band adopted to signify the Miss Antristy. The Vaquez and Vegas brothers were of Yaqui, Shashun, and Mexican heritage. The band Often called, to, uh, often alluded to Cajun and New Orleans culture in their lyrics and performing style. The group has been inducted to the Native American Association of Hall of Fame. There is only one living member left. There are a group also been inducted into the into the Smithsonian History Museum. Their hit songs, the group's hit songs, "Come, Come and Get Your Love," has been featured in two TV shows. One one award show, one movie, and a commercial. Their song, we're all, their song, We Were All Wounded at the Wounded Knee, which was made in tribute to the Wounded Knee Massacre that killed 300 Lakota tribesmen, led to censorship in the U.S. Another song, Wachovia, was a tribute to Wachovia, pilot spiritual leaders, the song reached number one in Europe, but didn't have recognition in the U.S. Thank you, Jaron, for sharing information about a band whose music we already know and love. Their music has touched hearts, brought smiles to faces, and shone light on important issues. Please welcome to the stage guest, Will Rogers, Mr. Monty Randolph, the president of the College of Muskogee Nation, and Mr. Mark Randolph, a councilman for the Muskogee Creek Nation. I greet you this morning, young folks, and my name's Mark, and I have something to read to you, okay? I want you to listen, okay? Show respect to others. Each person has a special gift. <clears throat> what I'm talking about is we're all different, but we have a lot of similarities, and we believe in respect, right? Show respect to others. Each person has a special gift. Each one of you have a very special gift, at least one, but you have many. Share what you have. Giving makes you richer. Know who you are. You are a reflection on your family. 
Except what life brings, you cannot control many things. Have patience. Some things cannot be rushed. Live carefully. What you do will come back to you. Remember that one. Live carefully. If you do good, it's going to come back to you. Do good, all right? Take care of others. You cannot live without them. How many of you love your family, your friends? You see your hands. Say yes. Say love. I want you to say love. Good, good. Honor your elders. Listen, honor your elders. They show you the way in life. Pray for guidance. Many things are not known. See connections. All things are related. Thank you. God bless you, good folks. Madova Mark. Estongo. Abika Taladega to Madova Moman Ijo Ogidoes. Joe Ili Hajo Ji Choho Jifkidos, Muskogi Roa, Nakchoga Mahaga, Soho Ejit, Emikodos, Hayomat, Muskogi Igana, Fulatskis. Greetings, everyone. My name is Monty Randall. I'm the president of the College of the Muskogee Nation. I introduce myself in the Muskogee language. I let you know that I'm from the Abika Talladega tribal town. I'm Deer Clan. My warrior name is Joe Ely Hajoji, and I also let you know that you're on Muskogee land right now. So I said all that in my Muskogee language. Um, you're on Muskogee land right now, but this hasn't always been Muskogee Nation land. Share a little bit of information here if I can. Maybe not. It's all right, okay. So the Muskogee, the Muskogee Creek people, like many of the, of the 39 federally recognized tribes in Oklahoma, we were removed from our original homelands. So our original homelands of the Muskogee Creek people is in the southeastern part of the United States, in the Georgia and Alabama area. That's where, that's where our ancestral homelands were. That's where we, we existed. That's where our, our tribal towns, as I, as I introduced myself, coming from the Abika Talladega tribal town. That, that was one time in the Oxford, Alabama area. And that's where our, our ceremonial fire was at one time. We were forcibly removed after, after a series of treaties with the United States. We were forcibly removed, like many, to, to their homelands, uh, to, their, to the, their destination in Indian territory. Our ceremonial fire was taken on that trail of tears by our people and, and carried here to Oklahoma and then placed back down into the ground where it exists today, where many of us participate in our ceremonies today. We continued to thrive after, after we were removed and we, we established a, a, a tribal government after the Treaty of 1866, which set up a lot of standards for the Muscogee Creek people including our government. You, you may have heard about a, a McGirt case that reinstated the Muscogee Reservation recently. All of that stems from this Treaty of 1866. It also uh, creates, established the, the College of the Muscogee Nation. That's where I'm the president at. So we, have, we had a tribal government in 1867. We had a written constitution for, for Native American tribes in, in, in that time period, it, it, was, it was uncommon. We heard, we heard a lot about from, from the other speakers about the progress of Native American people, about the, the work that has been done by Native American people. So in, in that time period, our, our people were establishing things. They were establishing these written codes of laws, these constitutions, creating governments. And so that, that was present at that time we went through a period of, of, of assimilation policies. We went through the statehood of Oklahoma. We went through uh, termination policies, 
relocation policies, and then finally we, we got into the era of, of self-determination, and that's what one of the speakers was talking about also, the Indian Child Welfare Act. So all of these, all of these came through, all of these movements that we're hearing about. We just heard about a, a, a band, Redbone, in the, in the 60s and 70s who, who helped to spur this movement as well. There's been, there's been a lot of things that, that have come together that have got us to where we are today. The Muscogee Creek Nation is under a, a constitution from the 1979 that we're, that we're presently under, and, and that sets up an executive branch, a legislative branch, and a judicial branch, and that's what Mr. Randolph is a part of. He's a part of that, that legislative branch, uh, serving as a council member. Muscogee Creek Nation, the headquarters in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, that's also where the College of the Muscogee Nation is at. We're located, uh, we were established in 2004. We are a nationally accredited college. We offer associate degree programs in Native American studies, tribal services, gaming, criminal justice, natural resources, and general studies. So these are two-year associate degree programs. So we offer a lot of scholarships to Muscogee Creek citizens and, and other tribal members of a federally recognized tribe. We also offer scholarships to non-native students. So we're a, a public tribal college. So we are open admissions. All, all you gotta do is apply and then you can come into the, to the college and, and receive one of the scholarships that we have. Myself, Mr. Randolph, and, and one, of your, one of your instructors, uh, Ms. Dockery, we all attended Haskell Indian Nations University in Lawrence, Kansas, which is a tribal college. So, so today you hear about the high price tag that comes with a college education. So by attending a, a, a tribal college, I basically got my four years, my bachelor's degree paid for by, by attending a tribal college. And then I was later, uh, I was later able to go on to a graduate degree program and then later a doctorate degree program. And, and I basically got my, my education paid for by attending a tribal college and then going through my, my tribal higher education program. So there's a lot of benefits attending tribal colleges. So if, if, you're, if you're looking for, for, for those of you who are in the high school, 10th, 11th, 12th grades, start, start preparing for that, start looking at some of the colleges. And if you're unsure, take a look at the College of the Muscogee Nation general studies programs that we offer. We, ha we also offer a lot, of, a lot of scholarships available to you. So um, I'll be around. If, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask me about, uh, about admissions, about tribal programs, about the scholarships, about the student services, about the organizations that we have on campus. So I thank you for your time. I thank you to the, to the students and the faculty and staff here at Will Rogers for hosting the, this program. Thank you all for your attention. Madhu. Thank you, Mr. Randall and Mr. Rudolph for the information about the College of Muscogee Creek Nation. There are some juniors and seniors taking notes right now. Please help welcome senior Samantha Horn and sophomore Sakari Webb to the stage to tell us about the legend of the Lakota people. The sacred supernatural woman met the Lakota people. She gave them the sacred pipe. She also taught them the seven sacred rituals, which provided the Lakota people guidelines for living. When she all finished and leaving, she rolled upon the earth four times. 
changing colors each time, from yellow to red to white and finally black. Before she disappeared, at almost the same time, great herds of buffalo were said to surround the camp after in the day food was pitiful. According to the Lakota legend, during the time of great hunger, two souls were sent to hunt some buffalo in the sacred Black Hills of the South Dakota. They saw something approaching in the distance. At first, they thought it was a buffalo calf, but as it came closer, they saw a beautiful young indigenous woman. To many indigenous tribes, the white buffalo calf is the sacred thing on the most sacred thing on the planet. The calf is a sign to begin life's sacred loop. Some indigenous people say the birth of the white calf is an omen because it takes birth place in the most unique and very unexpected places, and often among the poorest people. The birth is sacred within the indigenous communities because it brings a sense of hope and it's a sign that good times are about to happen or at least some reality of believing in something happening. Again, thank you for listening to this legend. This is a sign of good times to come. Samantha, thank you for your presentation and representing indigenous students and their beliefs. We have learned a valuable lesson to look good for good in unexpected places. Please now have the pleasure of welcoming a jingle dancer. Let's welcome TPS graduate Katana Foreman, who is Ms. Katua for the United Katua Band of Cherokee Indians. Following her will be Kayla Maggie with a fancy dance. Kayla's a 2022 through 2023 Delaware powwow princess. Accompanying them will be Anthony Kemble. Hello everyone, my name is Kayla Marie McGee and I'm the 2022-2023 Delaware Powell Princess. I'm here today representing Indian Healthcare Resource Center Behavioral Health Program. Um, I, I partner with them and I'd like to let all you know that it is okay not to be okay and to please go look into your local Behavioral Health Resource Center if you need it. Um, with that being said, I'd like to thank everyone for having me today, and I hope you all have a good day. When is she? Sio Tohija Ida Kitana Somer Foreman. Hello, everyone. I am Miss Katua of the United Katua Band of the Cherokee Indians of Oklahoma, and it's such an honor to be here and dance with you today. Wado.
All right, y'all. Okay, so that is the conclusion now of the assembly. I want to thank all the performers or singers or dancers or speakers for coming out and really helping make it what it was today. Especially all of our students and staff who really helped. We couldn't have done this out without you. So for that being said, thank you so much and thank you for sharing some of, well, our, your heritage and our heritage together with our amazing students and faculty here at Will Rogers High, College High School. So now today, everybody, real quick, um, we're going to be releasing you to your second hour, okay? So you will be